So I want to just dive in the deep end as I do. And I want to ask you what your perspective is on the last three years and the perhaps undisclosed intention of the agenda of what we can just summarize as the great reset. What do you mm-hmm. think is behind all of this? In short, I think we are in a spiritual war. That's the best way I can make sense of all the different data points. But beyond that, I'm not quite certain of all the details of what's going on. I mean, generally, we're moving toward a direction where human liberties are being infringed upon, where we're becoming less and less free. And I should take a few steps back. Before 2020, I was not aware of these sorts of topics around liberty. This is pretty new for me. I mean, my first paradigm shift, if you want to call it that, was in 2016 around spiritual topics because I was a hardcore materialist. I thought life was random and meaningless, and I discovered that there was scientific evidence that contradicted my worldview. So that was a pretty radical shift. And so I was in this interesting place where I was, I had given myself space to explore topics that I was interested in, but I didn't realize I was going to be going down this more political rabbit hole of understanding the what I think is systemic deception in the world that we live in. So it was like my first paradigm shift was around the basic nature of reality, going from materialism to what some would call non-duality, a spiritual worldview generally. And then the second paradigm shift, and I think within each of these paradigm shifts, there are sub paradigm shifts that I probably haven't even figured out yet. But this other one around deception that we live in a world where the truth is not presented to us. And in fact, we're presented with falsehoods seemingly everywhere. So that's the backdrop with which I started to evaluate what was happening in the world. And the first red flag for me was I saw doctors being censored in early 2020. They were expressing opinions, which on the surface seemed to be pretty benign. Like they were saying, the problem was not as severe in hospitals as was being presented on the news, for example. And those doctors were being censored and taken off YouTube. So I had seen this actually professionally. I saw some corruption in the business world. So I there I saw parallels there. And then in my exploration of spirituality and the science of consciousness, I saw that scientists were being called pseudoscientists or being deplatformed or, or just in the media. So that led me to want to explore what was happening. And it led me to want to understand the basic organization of our society, politically and economically, because at the time, there was also a lot of political strife around the election. And I was trying to figure out where I stood on issues because I was coming from this newfound spiritual perspective. And there was a huge divide in the quote unquote spiritual world. Some people were on one side, others were on the other side. And I was finding myself very much on the pro-liberty side. And then I was trying to understand what that meant. Um, so I think we're generally, we're fighting for freedom ultimately on a physical level, but I think on a metaphysical level. The bipartisan PSYOP as it's sometimes referred to, right. And you reference finding yourself in this political arena and then trying to orient almost politically around your belief system. That was fundamentally a metaphysical perspective it was absolutely part of the the agenda. So I myself was characterized as like this pro-Trump right-winger QAnon fanatic when I have literally never once in my public career made a political statement ever once ever endorsing a candidate or anything along those lines. And that layer of the dialectic, so organizing these beliefs around one's embodiment, around one's native entitlements, into partisan sectors is an easy bait to take. And so a, a lot of what you write about and you you speak about is why and how government by its very nature can induce psychopathy. Like why the structure of government itself is the problem and therefore the ways in which these seeming illusory different flavors of government is just a a distraction. So I wonder if you can elaborate a little bit on the the morality really at at stake here, because I know that that's something that has has come up for you and certainly has for me. How is it that we are not asking a deep enough question around government itself as as a structural entity, as a ruling force, and why that can 
set the conditions for otherwise well-intentioned people, especially in, in a pyramid scheme, well-intentioned people to participate in structures that injure, that harm, that damage, and that fundamentally deceive. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you can elaborate a little bit about that. Sure. Well, I think fundamentally, this is about understanding what government is. And often when we hear political discussions, people are talking about the ways in which government should act. And there's this unspoken assumption that government is the way that we should do things in the world. That's the way we should structure society. So that led me to then explore philosophers who have questioned that basic assumption. And it, it starts with defining government, which is something I had never even thought about. I was I was beyond apolitical. I just didn't even care about political stuff. But then we were thrust into this era where all of a sudden we had to have opinions. And it was like, if you didn't have an opinion, then you were on one side or the other. So I wanted to explore this. To me, government is an entity that can legally initiate aggression against an individual's body or the property that he or she owns. So let's break that down. Because it's kind of a simple topic, but it's very deep. And if you haven't thought about this before, like I hadn't as of a few years ago, it's it takes some unwinding because we're so conditioned to believe that, oh, we have this benevolent government that takes care of us in society. And if we didn't have that, what would we, would we do from a very early age? So there's conditioning to be unwound here. So government is a, it's a compulsory entity, meaning it's not one that we hired to provide services for us. It provides lots of services that I would argue are important for society, like roads, courts, legal services, military police. It does lots of things that you probably want in society in some capacity, but we have the government to do it. And the government does it without our explicit consent. And this is where the rub really is, where Typically with a service provider in other areas of society, like I worked in investment banking and strategy consulting, where we my firm would be hired by someone, or if you're at a law firm, you get hired to provide a service and you typically have a contract that lays out what the service provider is going to provide and what the pricing structure is and what happens if the service provider fails to do the things it said it was going to do, how it could be terminated. You have that structure in place. With government, we have much more of an implied consent where you're born into a certain jurisdiction, certain territory, and then you're bound to the morality that the government sets for you, but you didn't necessarily consent to it. And you could leave that jurisdiction, but it's not so simple because expatriation can be complicated. You might owe taxes and you might just find yourself under a different ruler, essentially. So when you look at it that way, there's a realization that I've had that we're not we're born into a system where we're not free automatically, even though on an innate level, we're free. We're born into this compulsory system where we haven't voluntarily and explicitly consented to what's happening. And that cascades into lots of problems where this entity can't, this entity government, also known as the state in political theory, generally can force you to do things that you didn't ask for. It can define morality for you, and if you don't abide by that, then you are immoral under the government's eyes, even though you might be moral in your own eyes. And to me, on a spiritual level, that leads to all sorts of problems as well. And do you, you make the point that there are like this co consensus around the implied benefic <laughs> nature of government and how from tax collection to law enforcement to politicians and their roles in our lives, there are frank inversions, whether it's extortion or murder or aggression and violence, how these are sanctioned in this arena. Like I, I find myself wondering, has how many people have thought about that? <laughs> that that if it's if it's quote unquote legal for these agents, these government agents to participate in what we in one arena all agree is a moral behavior, then why would it be illegal for us as citizens to participate in the same amoral behavior? And this, of course, cognitive dissonance is something that is resolved through the passive implied consent that you that you reference. Yeah. So government becomes an entity that has special privileges, basically, 
it's an entity that can do things which a normal person or business could not do. They would be regarded as criminals.